Have you ever been to Moab, Utah? Hey, I'm gonna try something new today and share a little mini vlog with you about my most recent trip to Moab, Utah, which was amazing. Hey, I'm Coach Lisa from The Running University, and if you're new here to my channel, welcome back. If it's your first time checking out one of my videos, well, hey, welcome. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that you can get my weekly videos. So two weeks ago, I went to Moab and this has been on my bucket list for a while. So just to give you a quick background, <clears throat> I did a ladies training program for a race called the Thelma Louise in Moab. I think it was back in 2017, 2018, I can't remember. And we went, it was a program with the tribe and it was a blast. The weekend was fun. It was a half marathon, but it was on road and it was an out and back. So I remember just being out at Arches because of course we went and did some sightseeing and just seeing the trails and thinking, I have to get back here to do some trail running. So there are definitely some races that happen there and it just ha hadn't happened. Of course, COVID. Well, then as some of you may know, I got involved with the Trans Rockies running events. And two years ago, they announced that they were gonna have an inaugural race in Moab, three days instead of their six, which is the Colorado race. And that last year they were looking for people to go do some recon, to go check out the trails. And I thought, oh my God, this is so exciting. So I signed up for that last year. It was supposed to be in March of 2022, but um, I've only been injured twice in my entire running career. And I got injured because of um, overuse, but neither here nor there right now. And I couldn't go. So I was like super bummed out. And then I talked to the race director and we just worked it out. So I was, I just went this year and I decided to invite other people. It's not, it wasn't a true tribe event because I have to have some races that are just for me to have fun and enjoy myself. Even though I don't think my work is work as a coach, it still does add a different level of responsibility. So I got an Airbnb because this one doesn't have tents and we ended up having like nine, 10 ladies who came to, to the event. It was a first stage race for a few of them. And while I could just do a whole video on stage races, which I'm not going to get into right now, but basically it was three days. They had a full pint and a half pint and the full pint was about 54 miles. It changed a little bit throughout that time because of the, the severe weather that was happening before. So they had to alter the courses uh, a couple of times till the very last minute. But hey, I always say running teaches you lessons, right? We have to just learn to be flexible. So we went with the flow. And then the half pint was about, I think 30-ish miles total. So that's basically uh, what happened over the three days. And in Arizona, we had the storm was was brewing, basically. We were supposed to leave on a Wednesday and get there um, the day before so we could just chill and hang out. But um, all the roads to Moab were closed from, from the Phoenix area. So we had to wait until the roads were open. And that's basically, I took a bunch of pictures and I thought the best way for me to share my experience with you would be just to go through my pictures and show them to you. So that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do now. And by the way, if you wanna follow me on social media, I'm True Coach Lisa on Instagram. I'm also on Facebook, The Running University, but Instagram is really the best place because if I'm gonna do a live video, I usually go live on Instagram and I did several lives in the middle of the course. It's one of my favorite things to do if I have service is just to kind of say, hey, check out where I'm at. Um, this is one of the reasons why I love trail running and I love distance running because I love to get out in new places I've never seen before. There's nothing like just seeing mother nature on foot. I love it and I got a bunch of other people to join me. So here's my pictures. Hope you enjoy them. Let me know in the comments like what other types of videos you wanna see from me. And so would love to hear from you. At any rate, here is my slideshow with my commentary. So here is a, a little um, description of my trip um, through my pictures. I thought this would be a fun way. So we had to, we were gonna leave on Wednesday and you know arizona is not a place where we normally have bad weather that shuts all of our roads down but all the roads heading up north were hit severely by a storm and we were supposed to leave on wednesday 
So we had to, we made the call not to leave because it was too dangerous. And then in the morning we woke up to roads being closed and we were all ready to go. So we had to skip Wednesday and we left on Thursday. As soon as we got the, saw the information from AZ 511, which kudos to them for being very on top of that. Um, we started, we basically, I think took off around 11 o'clock in the morning. So this is a really just pretty view. We don't get to see snow much in the desert. So this is actually closer to Flagstaff. And it was just like super pretty. It was cool to see the snow um, falling off the trees. And then this right here, I think is like close to the Winslow area. So it was just really a great road trip. I've done this trip several times, whether I'm going, I'm going to the Four Corners area in, in um, Arizona. And so I just love the red. And then the white from the snow on the red rock was just absolutely beautiful. So this, these were just a couple of pictures from the trip. And then I skip quickly to our, um, this is at the start line of day one. So this is me and Meg, and we were the only two doing the full pint at the event. So the full pint was a total of 54 miles. The half pint was about 30 some miles. So um, we were going long and this was our first day. So this was at the start line. Before we started, it was a little chilly, but <laughs> but all good. And then, of course, I have to get a picture of all the ladies who were there with us. I think this was all of us. We might be missing one or two people because we just got there and I wanted to get the photo real quick. And this was not a true tribe event. I don't know that any of the Trans Rockies events will ever become a true tribe event because I love this event and it's also my fun race. And even though I work at it, like I do Dawn Patrol, um, I'm working. It's I, I don't want to be in coach mode while I'm out there having fun. So this was a fun trip for me. And here's another cute one. I always have to take a selfie and then somebody was at the start line asking if they wanted to take the picture. So sometimes it's nice not to have my big old face in, in front of the picture. So there's another picture. And then this was the race had started. <laughs> Gosh, I look funny there now that I'm looking at it. And this was, um, there's always fun characters on the race course to kind of help motivate. So this wasn't, um, this was just maybe a couple miles in and there's Meg. And I think that was a unicorn. I can't even remember, but then behind the, <laughs> the pink blob is, um, Huda, who is the race director for the Trans Rockies, um, events. So, um, it was fun to see him on the course. And again, here is just, you know, I think I mentioned this earlier, but the reason I love to be doing some of these events is to be on trails I've never been on. And this one for me, um, pretty much all the trails outside of the out and backs that we did. So I guess I didn't factor that in. It wasn't 54 new miles of trails because there were a few out and backs, but still a lot of new trail to me. And again, look at how gorgeous. So now you have the green the white from the snow, the red from the mountain. It was just so beautiful. The air was so crisp. And again, the pictures really don't do it justice, but here is, you know, just going along the way we were going around the, that mountain that you just saw in the previous picture. So, um, and just the view for, like, you know, back here, it was just, it was just breathtaking. It was so beautiful. And uh, this right here, again, people on the course. So this right here is Lanier. And I had met him on the course. Uh, you know, the great thing about these longer runs is, you know, you're walking, you're running, you know, you're meeting new people. So we got to share a little bit of our story, you know, why we were there, how we got into distance running. And this clown right here is um, Steve Adderalt, who happens to be, I hope I said his name right. <laughs> he happens to be the race director for Coca Dona 250. And I say this very lightly, but someday I think that's going to happen. It's on my bucket list, but I need to do a few longer distances before I fully um, commit to that. And I feel like it'll be on a two to three year um, uh, list. I, you know, still have to think about it. But at any rate, I love this. He's a race director and he gets how important it is that we have some cheering and fun out on the course. So he was out there with his girlfriend. We saw him every day. Um, just cheering us on and you know that little bit really just goes a long way and here again we have some more of the cheers on the course this is actually a job a volunteer job that you get to do for trans rockies 
Um, and I don't know, I think this was a love boat theme, not really sure. But if you know me, uh, you know, I kid around, I'll never refuse a drink out on the course. Again, I'm not like getting sloshed. I have the smallest, teeniest little shot. So this was <laughs> the first picture I posted on social media from this race, as well as um, my first shot of fireball of the weekend. <laughs> so and then here I was running back. And if you know, you know, but this is Myrna the Myrnavator, one of my big inspirations and also the person who actually got Dawn Patrol going at Trans Rockies. So just the quickest story, um, I guess she was doing the event and she wasn't able to finish one of the stages. So she asked Huda if she could start an hour early. And that's basically how Dawn Patrol was born. And I so appreciate races that really are all inclusive. And I'm not just talking about diversity inclusive. I'm talking about all runner paces inclusive. Now, you know, there has to be a cutoff. So everybody can't do it, but you can pretty much hike most of these races fast and still get them done. And again, everybody should have a chance to see the amazing beauty that Mother Nature has to offer us. So I'm always grateful for Myrna and what she did for Trans Rockies because now it's a fun, you know, job that I get to do. So that was on the way back. And then of course, as we finished up, oh, oh here we go. <laughs> Here's Meg and I again, and Meg is faster than, than I am, so she got done before me. And it was cold, so there was a fire pit, and there's always beer at the finish line, and I never refuse a beer. So, and Pipple was playing one of my favorites, <laughs> and we have been around fire pits listening and dancing to Pipple. That is not our first time, so it was kind of funny that we were doing it again and trans Rockies events you normally stay in the tents and <coughs> excuse me Moab was not like that excuse me we had to um, we got an Airbnb so there were nine or ten of us in the Airbnb and the cool thing about that is that when we got back there was a hot tub so that made a big difference um, for doing some of those miles and again it was just beautiful weather um, a little crispy outside, cold, but nice and warm inside. So, and now we're moving along to day two, which was a Dawn Patrol day. They did have to change uh, the courses several times up to the day before because of that storm that I talked about earlier. And um, because of that, the routes changed. And this was supposed to be a 30, 31 mile day for the full pint. It ended up being 25, not complaining that they shortened it. Um, but because it was longer, we did decide to keep Dawn Patrol. So we did start an hour early with the Dawn Patrol group. And of course I had the, the opportunity to lead that. So here we started an up, you know, and again, it was awesome because we have all these red rocks and then back here you can see um, there was beautiful mountains in the background and here the picture doesn't do it justice. It never does, but the sun was kind of coming up, you know, from behind this, um, and it just looked beautiful. So of course I had to take a picture and as always, uh, more cheers on the course, uh, more fireball shots. Meg and I decided to stay together for pretty much the, the whole race here. And, um, we hiked a lot of it. Uh, her knee was bugging her just a wee bit, so we just decided that that was, that was good. And we just had a blast, you know, we chilled, we ran a little bit, and we talked, <laughs> drank some fireball. And again, just some more beautiful views. Um, I am afraid of heights, so that was my biggest concern going into this race. But thankfully, there wasn't anything um, that really was fearful for me, so I was able to get through it okay. And then here on the way back, um, I don't know what the name of this sculpture is. I am calling it Eagle Head because that's what it looks like. I'm sure that it's probably something similar to that. But again, just, just so, so beautiful. And now this is the morning of day three. So now it's day three. I believe this is our entire group. We happen to see Huda, who is always working his butt off, making sure all the runners are happy doing their thing. And we were able to grab him real quick for a quick photo op. And then um, day three was a windy day. Um, and again, oh my gosh, just beautiful. Everywhere you looked, you know, this is why I don't focus on speed when I'm running most of the time, especially a new place. I want to see all the things. 
my whole purpose of running is this, is seeing all the things, taking in the beauty. Um, that's really why I mostly run, mostly run trails and long distances. Again, just some more beautiful sights to see. Um, and this right here was very cool. Um, so I'm going to go closer in. So ironically, the hat and the logo of the race had the infamous arch. And this right here is Arches National Park, we were told, um, so that you could see that it's, na you know, Arches National Park. This, this is the only arch that we actually saw on the course and from that far away. It is not the arch, but here you could just see again, that is Arches National Park. So if you've never been to Moab, I can't say enough. It's so beautiful. Definitely go check it out. Um, I'm always focusing on technique. But um, a Friday with the wind, um, you know, and I was by myself and it was it was just fun. So I just want to share what I did here from a technique standpoint. Um, there was a lot of wind and, you know, this this was pretty easy to run on. You know, it's slick rock, but there was it wasn't really slick. Um, and of course, when you're chi running, if you're just lifting up your feet and you're not actually pushing yourself, you're going to be less likely to fall because you're not pushing yourself anywhere. And this red reddish um, trail that you can see right here, I'm assuming was put on by the parks in Moab. It's not from the Trans Rockies race because there's a lot of mountain bikers here. And I assume they just have a path they want you to follow. So it's the coolest thing. It was pretty windy. I had the bill of my hat pointing down. So my head position was a little weird, but I didn't want my hat to be taken away. Um, and all I could see was this line. And if you know chi running or chi walking, we call it ichi. So even though I wasn't looking straight ahead, I literally was just locked into this visually and intentionally. And I just was following this like a little Pac-Man is how it felt. It was, I had such, so much fun. And then every once in a while I would look up to see what was happening, but you know, just weaving around doing this huge, for me, I remember on that day because of the the wind, really using my arm swing to help and focusing on cadence, you know, to, to, to just keep moving, always focusing on lifting through the crown of my head um, as one of the most basic things to always remember. But this day was so much fun. I had a blast. Again, a couple more file, fireball shots. Um, and this is, I don't know where this one is. Oh, some of these got a little out of order. You know what? I'm already in the middle of recording, so I'm just not going to worry about it. Um, this was just another view when we were going out. Um, okay. So now they're a little out of order. I thought I had these in order. I'm not sure. Here is again, Huda. That's his sprinter van in the background. And there he is. Um, maybe this is, maybe this is day six. I don't, or day three. Let me see what the next picture is. This is again, heck, I don't even remember what day this is at this point. Might still be that that last day. I don't know. I'm not sure how these got out of order, but all good. Again, just pretty pictures. I think I had sent that to my mom. Um, here's some more. Again, just beautiful pictures of the scenery. Um, and, you know, apparently I don't think these are legal. You should not be messing around with any of the rocks, but a lot of times you'll see those out there and they do make that was from day one. So I guess when I tried to put these in order of, um, of day time, it did that the cloud did not do that. So all good. It doesn't matter. I just really wanted to share my experience with you anyway. Um, this was from day one though really pretty. This was my Dawn Patrol group on day two. So again, we had a nice group, about 20-ish people um, who came out to leave an hour early just to make sure that they could get that done. And let's see here. Okay, so there's that eagle. Um, this was um, further up. So the, the, the one that you saw before was much closer and you could actually see the runners down here. So we actually came up this way and then went back this way. Um, and again, I'm at the point where because <laughs> they're not in order. Again, Steve and his girlfriend out on the course. Yes, those are fireball shots. This was day two. We love unicorns. We love fireball. Again, you're just in the middle. We did 25 miles that day. And again, you just wonder how it just goes by. You're enjoying the beauty. You're hanging out with your friend, having a little fireball. <coughs> Excuse me. Again, here we had, we had to take this picture because if you see right here, we're all heavy. We have these these are like timing chips and you can put them on your pack or wherever most of us put it on our ankles. So the big joke was that was our, our jail, jail bracelets <laughs> that we were wearing. Um, 
and then heck don't even know what that is and just at the end one of my favorites because monkeys are my thing if you know me it's my it's what my friend called me in high school it was my nickname i love monkeys they're fun trudy is our monkey mascot for the true tribe because um you know people use snails and not all our people in our group are actually slow we have age group winners we have people who are fast but monkeys and represent to me instead of the tortoise and the hare they like to have fun they like to be together so i thought that was that would be more more representative of us so there you have it there is th those are my pictures from my moab trip thank you for watching